I shouldn't even be talking here. If they find out what I'm doing, they'll hang me out like one day's wash. Sure they will, Manny. But you knew the risk when you made the deal. Even for the money, I wouldn't do this if you were really the police. But seeing as how you're just a private investigator. Yeah, I admire your ethics. Let's have it. Keep it down. It's all there. Should have been a stunt flyer. Less risk and more money. Not even so much as a thank you. That's a cry she must bear, Manny. Nobody loves a stoolie. I'm Mike Kovac. I deal in pictures and crime. Police Inspector Randolph had called me in about a headline that spelled murder. Where do I fit in? I'm a photographer. I need a photographer. A good one. Well, it looks to me like a routine police investigation. It's the police I want you to investigate. But for an ordinary mugging? I don't think it is. Two weeks ago, I hired a private investigator to check on newspaper charges of police corruption in the 84th District. He find anything? He must have. My investigator is the man who was beaten to death on Oakley Street. Well, they play rough. He phoned my office a little before this happened and left a message that he was bringing in some evidence. No papers were found on him. He must have had something mighty important to say to get knocked out for it. Yes, but I don't want verbal evidence. Nor are I witnesses who can be frightened into changing their testimony. I want picture proof. Yeah, I'd have to be very careful. The methods are up to you. Just be careful. And Mike, don't feel you have to find crooked police. If you come up with evidence to clear the department, I'll be just as happy. So will I, Inspector. I want you to cover every inch of that precinct. I want pictures of everything that goes on there. Everything. I don't care if it's a 10-year-old kid cheating at marbles. Okay. Mike, watch yourself. Remember what happened to my other man. You'll be in danger. From a 10-year-old marble shop? I'll see you, Inspector. First thing I did was look the district over. I didn't like what I saw. Hi. Cab, mister? Well, that depends. On what? If I have some place to go. Well, make up your mind, mister. I can't arrange your social life. Well, I thought maybe you could. Uh, where's the game tonight? No game. The Yanks are in Boston, and the Dodgers don't play here no more. Come on, you know what I mean. Sure I do. Why don't you try further uptown, copper? I decided that infrared pictures were in order. With this equipment, I could take pictures in the dark with no flash to give me away. If 
if stolen goods were involved, a pawn shop was a good place to check it. Something? Yeah. I wonder how much you give me for this equipment here. Well, that all depends. Is it, um... Well, I misplaced the bill of sale, if that's what you mean. Oh, I see. Well, in that case... in a hurry, but there was something left behind, blood. Inspector, this is my Kovac. I know what time it is. But of course it's important. Yeah, yeah, there's plenty happening in that district. There are B girls working the bars, and at least one pawn shop is fencing openly, and I'm sure of gambling. And Inspector, if you're worried about a crooked cop, you can stop worrying. Because I think he got in a fight over the split. Nice and clear, but you can't see the man's face, nor the face of the officer. You can't read his badge number either, but I was shooting blind, using infrared light. Now, the camera can see into the alley, but I couldn't. Mike, when I put you on this assignment, I told you you didn't have to find evidence of police corruption. What are you getting at? Just this. All of our officers are present and accounted for. None killed, none reported wounded. That's impossible. The officer that was knifed couldn't be walking around now. Mike, level with me. Where did you get this photo? Now, don't you play games with me, Inspector. Are you accusing me of faking that picture? Not me, Mike. But Lieutenant Donovan's been burning ever since he found out I hired you. He's been screaming frame up all morning. Lieutenant Donovan? Where is he now? At the alley, investigating what he referred to as that so-called knifing. You know, Inspector, it looks like I got caught right in the middle of a family argument. You boys really protect your own, don't you? Hmm? <laughs> I'd say Kovac was standing across the street when he took that picture, Lieutenant. Yeah. The other two must have been standing just about where we are. Hello, Mike. We were just talking about you. Yeah, I heard. And I don't like what you've been saying. The show beat? Yeah. You hear anything last night? They're not my shift. I came on at 8 this morning. I uh, talked to the man on the beat. He was nowhere near here at 11 last night. We timed it pretty good. Did you see that blood over there? No 
cold blood, huh? What's the deal, Mike? Does the inspector promise you a bonus if you come up with some evidence against the department? How come you're running scared, Donovan? You mixed up in this? Now, he's up, Lieutenant. Now, if he faked it, we'll nail him. Do you believe I staged that picture? Until we find a dead policeman, it's a possibility. All right. Suppose there was no officer involved. Then that means that somebody was posing as one. What is this, a confession? And you don't run up a uniform on a sewing machine. So he probably rented it at a costume rental house. We already thought of that. We're checking the costumers right now. Any more bright ideas? Yes. A girl bumped into me running out of this alley. Why don't you drop it, Mike? Look at it from our point of view. A cop's been killed, only he ain't dead. He sheds blood all over an alley, only there's no blood. And to top it off, a phantom lady? She was solid enough to knock me down and real enough to have graduated from Washburn High. How do you know that? She was wearing a little pin right on her dress that had a W on it. Well, if she gets in touch with us, I'll let you know. Oh, now, wait a minute, Lieutenant. Aren't you gonna look for her? Oh, I know where to find her. My grandson's got a picture of her in his copy of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. I was on a spot with Donovan. My only clue was that high school pin. At Washburn High, I got permission to look through the yearbooks. High school has changed since my time. They speak a new kind of language, like cool, like uh, beat, like way out. Did you know that that's a 1951 book? Wouldn't the chick you're hunting be a little old for that modeling bit? A soft focus lens you should uh, take away the wrinkles. Hey, like, why couldn't you use me, Dad? I really dig that flashbulb bit. I'm a real swinging dish. Shoot me, Daddy-o. <laughs> yeah, I will, later. Like, uh, two years from now. What can you do with a square? This one. I think this is her. Yeah, I'm sure it's her. Jenny Henson. Hey, do you dig her? Why, like she's nothing, man. She's an old friend. Oh, so why couldn't you make it with her name? Well, you see, I got a very poor memory. As a matter of fact, I, I can't remember her address. I would appreciate it if you... Oh, well, the head warden doesn't like us handing out that kind of information. I mean, like, how do I know you're not one of those way-out fiends? Do I look like a way-out fiend? Okay, so it's no skin off my back. I'll read about it in the newspapers. Well, this was her pad way back in the Middle Ages, before she split the campus. A science major. And what do you study? Jazz? I'm an English major, Daddy-o. <laughs> Maybe. I'm the superintendent of this building. Come to see about the back bedroom? No, I come to see about a tenant named Hanson. I don't see the name on the mailboxes. That's only cause it ain't there. Oh. I wonder if you could tell me where they moved to. I'm looking for their daughter, Jenny. Even if I can tell you where she is, it wouldn't do you no good. Why? A couple of years after they moved out of here. Oh, about five years back, she was killed by a hit and run driver. gets more fantastic by the minute. First he comes up with a knife when it didn't happen. Then he comes up with an eyewitness. But by his own admission, the eyewitness died five years before he saw her. No. I didn't say that. The super did, and he may have lied to me. All right, Mike, we're going along with you. Hit and run is a felony. The girl was killed, we'll have the record. The file on the Hanson hit and run, Inspector. Well, the truth, Jenny Hansen was killed five years ago by hit and run. How many points do you figure that scores for your side? Can I see that phone? Oh, Mike, why don't you give up? Now, what good is it going to do you to see the dead girl's father? The dead girl also has a very much alive sister. Maybe I wasn't seeing ghosts last night. The report.
report on the costume rentals. No police uniforms rented recently. Where do you figure that leads us? Well, if no one rented a uniform, then maybe an officer was involved in the knifing. I didn't say one wasn't. Look, if one of our men had gone wrong, I want to find him as much as anyone. I just hate to shake down my own men. Now, that area is patrolled by officers, Austin Blair, Edgar Masters, and North Farnham. See, this is the 15th. Let Blair be on duty now. Send in uh, Farnham and Masters. They're off duty. I don't care if they're off duty. Get them in here. Every time we go through one of these, a little bit gets chipped off the department's morale. <laughs> be obvious by now that she's either deaf or not at home. Well, if you were to make the choice, which would you say? Not at home. Why would you say that? Because she never gets home from the department store before 6. Her shift doesn't let out until 5.30. Oh, yeah, I should have remembered. That's the store at, uh... uh 22nd and Vernon. Thank you, ma'am. Young man, if you bring her home late, please try not to make a racket in the hall. We'll tiptoe, ma'am. Mm. Thank you. Let go my arm. I don't know you. Oh, yes. We bumped into each other last night in the alley. I don't know what you're up to, but you'd better turn me loose. Or I'll call the police. You do just that. All right, mister. What is it you want? You're hurting my arm. Uh. Please, mister. It's just a family argument, fella. Come on, we're creating a scene. Here you are, miss. Yeah? Vodka gimlets, please. How many? Two. That's what I thought. Let's go. I know a little place. Wait a minute. I like it here. Well, do we get our drinks? Why don't you listen to your girlfriend, Mac, and just kindly get out of here? Oh, wait a minute. I said two vodka gimlets. Look, Mac, you said your little joke, and we've all had a big laugh. Now, let's not beat it to death. Your girl wants a drink, she gets ginger ale. Why, she's a big girl? She sure is, an awful big girl for her age. But there's such a thing as milking a good racket. I don't know what started this. All I did was ask for a drink. You asked for two drinks. You ain't trapping me into serving her liquor again. You know as well as I do, she's only 17. Well, you must be out of your mind. She looks at least uh, 23. Yeah, only the judge don't take that as an excuse. I paid a shakedown once to keep from losing my license. Now, why don't you be a good boy and work the other side of the street? Well. You're lucky. You look five years older than your age. 
Is that supposed to be a compliment? In your case, it's a gold mine. You walk into a bar or a liquor store. They serve you, and then your boyfriend, or whoever he is, he can dress in a policeman's uniform. And then you shake down the owner. Who are you, mister? And what are you mixing up in this for? My car's right around the corner. Come on, I'll take you home. Come on. It's either home or the police station. Greet your daughter's boyfriend with a gun? Are you a cop? No, but I can get them here pretty quick. For what? I know all about your shakedown racket. The way you posed as a policeman and followed your daughter into bars. Me posed as a policeman? Yeah. I got a nice clear picture of you getting stabbed last night. Who did it? One of the bar owners you were trying to squeeze? Oh, so you're a news hound, huh? Look, fella, do I look like I've been knifed? Take off your coat. Now the shirts. Oh, now wait a minute. Take it off. Well, can I get dressed now? The heating system around here is pretty bad. Go ahead. Now what? We'll get the police in here. And I know at least one of them who's worked up enough to get the story out of you, one way or another. Well, now look, fella, I don't care for myself, but think of my daughter. Why didn't you? Please, mister, let him go! Oh, Pop! Oh, Pop! Was that necessary? He's trying to get away. He's just a petty shakedown artist. You gotta have him picked up within an hour. Young man, you promised. Back inside. That's an order. Is something wrong? It's just a scratch. Well, you're bleeding all over the place here. I said it was just a scratch. Mm -hmm. There never was anyone posing as a policeman. Who knifed you, Hanson? Still trying to alibi your fake picture, huh? Why did he do it, Blair? You try to cut him down on his split? Let's get going, Kobach. I'm taking you and the girl down to the station. Why don't you call a wagon? For what? I can take you in myself. Like you took him in? Well, I'm gonna make it hard for you. You wanna get rid of us, you do it right here. Don't think I won't, Kobach. Stay down there. This is police business. I said it's police business. So is this plan. Hurt pretty bad. You better call an ambulance. Call one. Mister, I hope you don't make it. Well, you caught your crooked cop, Mike. Should make you happy. No. That who knife Blair? Yeah. And you better take the girl, too. She was mixed up in it. I'll be right here. And it looks like we owe you an apology, Kovac. We don't owe him nothing. And if you're hanging around here waiting for a vote of thanks, you're gonna age badly. And we never needed you. This was our mess. We'd have cleaned it up. Maybe in a day, maybe two, but we'd have cleaned it up. I'm not looking for medals, Donovan. The inspector hired me to do a job, and I did it. And all I did was take some pictures. And that's all I ever do. And that's all I ever want to do. Hey, Mike. Buy you a cup of coffee. 